Alright guys, I got the needle in the vein, and now I'm gonna take the syringe off. Uh, are you sure about that, Mike? That looks pretty bright red. And pulsatile. That's in the carotid artery. Oops. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome back to Behind the Knife. In this bonus episode, we'll be showing you guys how to access vessels under ultrasonic guidance and not accidentally hit the carotid artery like my uh, dumb alter ego. This is not a comprehensive guide on the use of ultrasound, but it should be enough to get you started accessing vessels with it. This is a prerequisite skill to a lot of the common bedside procedures which we cover here on the channel, like uh, central lines or radial arterial lines. Now, because every hospital has different ultrasound machines, I won't be going over the details of how the buttons on the machine work. For that, you should review on your own time how your hospital's equipment works. It's important to start out with the right probe. For looking at vessels, you basically need a small linear probe like this one. These probes are ideal for looking at shallow structures like accessible blood vessels because they emit high frequency sound waves. Those waves don't penetrate far, but they provide high resolution images. The linear rectangular array will also help keep the picture straight and not distort straight lines as you stray away from the middle of the image, and that's helpful when you are trying to guide a needle. Bigger curvilinear probes like this are designed to look deeper and wider and will not give you the same image quality, so be sure to select the right probe. A lot of woes that you have using the ultrasound could honestly be solved by just using more ultrasound gel, so get a really nice dollop on there and replenish it throughout your procedure if you need to. Before you even put the probe down on the skin, look to see what side of the probe has the little dot or bump. The dot or bump marks the left side of the picture on the screen. Always orient the probe so the dot is facing to your left or toward you. If you don't, things will look backwards. Now when you do get the ultrasound probe down into the skin, you'll want to adjust the gain and the depth that the machine is providing you. The gain basically determines how bright the picture is. Too little gain and your eyes won't be able to detect important details in the signal. Too much gain and the natural noise in the signal will become too bright and obscure important details. And now I'm adjusting the depth. You want the target vessel and the overlying tissue to take up most of the screen. And if there's an important deeper structure to keep track of, make sure that stays in the window as well. So you see a tubular structure, but you're not sure if it's a blood vessel. Well, one really good way to find out is to turn on color Doppler mode, like this. Also under color Doppler, arteries will look more pulsatile than veins. And one of the best ways to distinguish between an artery and a vein, which often run next to each other, is to compress them. Veins will compress easily, while arteries will be resistant to compression and remain pulsatile. So the vessel on the right here is the vein. How should you hold the syringe? Your index finger and your ring finger should curl around the lip of the plunger, while your thumb and your middle finger should brace against the lip of the syringe body itself. This will allow you to pull the plunger while pushing away the syringe body at the same time. And you'll be using the ultrasound probe with only one hand, so be sure to brace it by resting either the ulnar edge of the hand or just the pinky on the patient. All right, finally the good stuff. How do you actually get the needle down to the vessel? I will show you two main techniques for guiding the needle, and they share similar principles. Uh, and I'll begin with my favorite technique, the creep method. When using the creep method, center the probe right over the vessel, and then insert the needle right under the center of the probe. Very soon, you'll see the needle appear near the top of the screen. When you do, stop moving the needle. Now slowly run the probe further down the vessel away from the needle until the needle disappears. When this happens, back the probe back up just a little until the needle comes back into view. That's how you know you're looking at the very tip of the needle. Advance the needle a little bit again, then stop. And then again, move the ultrasound further until you reach the spot just where the needle disappears. And you repeat these two steps as you continue advancing the needle and watching the tip move toward the vessel. And along the way, you may notice that you need to change course a little to the left or to the right to remain on target. But here we go. I definitively saw the tip enter the vessel and it went no further. And now I pull back and I get some blood. This method may seem cumbersome, but once you get used to it, the movements back and forth between the needle and the probe are like a coordinated dance. And I like this method because it's very safe. You always know where the tip of the needle is. 
The other method I wanted to show you guys is what I call the right isosceles triangle method. You'll see why. So again, find the vessel you want to access with the ultrasound. Now observe how deep that vessel is from the skin. Looks like it's about two centimeters to me. Now look at the probe on the skin and estimate that same distance backward from the center of the probe. Here we go, here's about two centimeters. At this imaginary point, insert the needle at a 45 degree angle from the skin, aiming toward the center of the probe and slowly advance as you watch the screen. Theoretically, you will see the tip of the needle come into view at exactly the level of the vessel. Boom. I say theoretically because it depends on how accurately you estimated the distance on the skin and how exactly the needle was angled at 45 degrees. This method works because a 45-45-90 triangle has equally sized legs. And that's it. How to use ultrasound to hit those pesky vessels. If you came here from the middle of one of our other procedure videos, like the, like the central line video, now's a good time to mosey on back there and finish that video up. And if you haven't seen the other videos on our channel, what are you waiting for? Here, I'll make it easy for you. Hit one of these boxes.